Wolverine. Who's asking? You're Wolverine? You're Weapon X, right? You look different than in my dreams. You still got both your hands. The writer on Weapon X, his name is Jason Aaron, a wonderful writer. Uh, we did a, a story arc called Get Mystique. Before that, it was so well received that Marvel wanted to relaunch Wolverine, the Weapon X series, and uh, they asked us to do it. So that's how it got started. Comic book fans love Wolverine so much because there's really not a lot of fluff to him, I think. He's very edgy and tough, plus the visual. He's got claws that come out of his his hands and he's indestructible basically he's also has had a skeleton that's laced with metal called adamantium and so his bones are unbreakable we all want to fancy ourselves as indestructible and immortal and, and plus tough as nails and i think that's why i've heard the stories just like everyone else i know what sort of man he used to be but we're walking into a nest of god knows how many death locks here why would you put someone at the point who doesn't even have any hands <laughs> We got heavily armed sentries with cyborg guard dogs circling from either side. Rocket launchers mounted in every guard tower along the south wall. And we just stepped into a minefield the size of Nebraska. Stow the damn chatter and follow my lead. Any more questions, Wachowski? What we come to find out in this particular story is that uh, there's a lot of death locks. So there's a future timeline where this corporation has made many death locks to go back in time and kill all these heroes, all the, the superheroes. But I guess that, that would be the only difference is that his brain has been taken over and the humanity that was underneath is being dominated by this urge to kill. Cut her, cut her, drink her blood and target status. Reviewing. Kill, kill, kill. Inside of me, he's got a murderer from a prison. They turned a murderer from prison into a death lock. So he's not a real redeemable character as you see early on in the story when he comes back in time to kill heroes, he goes and kills the babies who were meant to be heroes. So I think that's the thing that's the biggest difference is he's a really bad guy in this. The critical reaction to Tomorrow or Dies Today with Deathlock was quite good, quite well received. I think any time travel story is open for a lot of criticism because there's always holes in time travel stories and how to make them work, you know? Um, I think Jason did a fairly seamless job of tying it all together. The Deathlocks have to localize their effect on the time stream in order to keep from creating chaos. They can only kill the people on their target list. If you're not a target, then it means you're no longer a threat to them in the future. Most likely it means... Uh, they've already killed you. Logan, no! I've done time travel stories where we're in the past, in the future, but nothing this extensive where the future implications and coming back in time to try to change the course of history, nothing like that. And that's kind of why I don't believe there actually is time travel. Because wouldn't somebody have prevented Lincoln's assassination by now? Or, you know, things like that. But the idea of it is fascinating. So it meant a lot to me to be able to do something like that. Just to actually be an integral part, mentally, of a story like that. You knew all along this would happen. It had to happen. I understand that. Know that I don't blame you. I just... I don't know what I'm supposed to say to you now. I don't know what to say to make you see. Just, just watch me. Watch my face as I die. See that, that I love you. And then ask yourself, why? Jason and I have the advantage of us having worked together so much that we really don't have to communicate a whole lot. I can read his scripts, and at the end of the day, what I produce visually works really well with what he writes. It's not always like that with everybody, but in this case, as far as writer-artist, my work ends up being a good extension of his writing. <laughs> Captain America, mission 
exterminate. Not today, sweetheart. To describe my art style, I'd have to say that it starts with reading and then just sitting and visualizing. Sometimes I'll take a day or two to absorb it and let images come into my head. I tend to work ahead, meaning I don't finish page by page. I tend to work maybe five pages at a time. Go and jump ahead and get the story laid out throughout the whole book. And then I can go back and read it, step back, read it, see how it reads. You know, I'll stand up even, put it on the table here and see how it flows. See what things I think need to be changed. Should I zoom in on this shot? Should I make it more of an established shot, middle ground? Uh, worm's eye view, bird's eye view, whatever it is I think works within the context of the story. Also within the context of the page, sometimes you come up with a great shot in a panel, but when you have it on the page next to the other panels graphically and flow-wise it doesn't really work. And you hate to throw those things away, but it's a necessary evil sometimes. So um, once I get through all that I sit down and um, I commit to the actual pencil. Once I know that I've got everything worked out, meaning the figure dynamics, the compositions within the panels, the storytelling, all of that's worked out where I'm comfortable with it, that's when I commit to the actual pencil, the type pencil. And I spend so much time on the storytelling and things like that that sometimes for deadline's sake, you know, sometimes the stylization of my work is a little bit more raw than some others polished. And I think that's why my style worked well with Wolverine. As he's a raw character and my visual style's a little bit raw. Error code 245. Hiya, sweetheart. Remember me? <laughs> Nobody touch that. I'll be back for it in a minute. The timetable between starting a, an issue and finishing an issue varies obviously depending on what's in the issue, but it averages about five to six weeks. If I break it down on a daily basis, I get up in the morning, get my kids off to school, sit down, work to maybe two or three, you know, do other things I have to do, and then I work a few hours at night. Um, and this goes on, it's that process, I try to set it up as much of a normal schedule as I can, even though I work at home, it's easy to not be disciplined. So you actually have to be more disciplined in a way because you, you know, not, you don't have somebody looking over your shoulder. Your, your own, that's a benefit and a distraction sometimes. So it goes from there, you know, I work daily, five sometimes, most of the time I work every day of the week, even on the weekends. Because what happens over time, as long as I've done, is it burns into your consciousness, it always needs to be done. You know, so you're never actually fully relaxed ever, you know, unless you're just off a book. But then you're not relaxed because you have, you, you gotta think about what your next job is going to be. So um, you, you're sort of conditioned to constantly be a little bit of a machine and make sure that you get in there and get that work done. And then overall, it it's, works out to about five to six weeks. From the journals of Jeffrey Winstone, tonight is the night, the one I've been waiting for, training for, ever since the accident that changed me forever, that robbed me of my life and left me as this. This monster. It was uh, great to finally see this epic played out in print. It's always fun for me anyways because I'm the illustrator and it comes out of my head onto the paper sort of, I mean visually speaking. So it's always fun for me if I feel comfortable with the, the overall coloring and everything the way it turns out. It's a wonderful experience. For me though I have to let it sit for sometimes even a year before I can go back and read it and appreciate it without being close to it again. So it becomes like me just watching someone else's movie. Usually when I get it, it's hard for me to look at it and, and read it and sit down and absorb it and enjoy the story just as, on its own without me having been any part of the visuals and me remembering what song was playing on the radio when I drew that panel. But it's always fun. That's one of the wonderful things about this medium is, is uh, the creative process and having that tangible thing in your hands to to look at and read and it's timeless and it's forever you know but this particular story was uh, I was proud of it came out really well um, I liked the direction it went and, uh, and the way it tied up it had a good beginning middle and end and uh, you can't ask for much more than that that child is going to grow up to become a murderer that doesn't have to happen 
We can change that. No, something tells me that you cannot. How'd he become one of the good guys? I was there, and I ain't quite sure I understand it. I absolutely think that animated comics are going to play a huge role in, in the future of the industry. Um, be, just for the fact that everything is going to iPads, and you know, what better way to see a story played out again, a quick read, but you know, especially in a comic book, than to see them move. I mean, well, that's ultimately why film was created. Anyways, we want to see our stories come to life for real, and. Because comic books are sort of a modern day form of mythology and it is a, a wonderful variation on the theme of telling a story through film or whatever, I think it's bound to just keep growing and getting better and as the craft of it gets better and better, I can't wait to see it, you know. Uh, I mean, for me to see my own personal work moving and coming to life is, is you know, is, uh, something I'm anxious for and, and can't wait. And I would imagine everybody feels that way. So just for that reason, I think it's going to succeed wildly. <laughs> Cap, come in! Steve, what the hell is happening? Deathlock's got the best of us. They're more powerful than we knew. We're in pursuit now. In pursuit? That sounds way better than on our way to getting knocked unconscious again, which is what we're really doing, right? I truly believe that the impact that motion comics will have on my own work and the way I see it and the way I approach my work, it's certainly going to influence technically what I put in the foreground and the backgrounds, things that I think will jump off the page, things I don't. I have a particular way of telling a story and having the eye move through the pages anyway and through the panels to make it a comfortable read because sometimes you can run into problems in a comic book where you know there's so much clutter in one panel that it's hard to look at and hard to get through. I tend to want the eye to flow and feel easy about going through the panels and, and feel easy about that information that I'm trying to convey so the reader feels that sense of ease and, and it makes it more of an enjoyable experience. So I do think that there will be um, a learning curve for myself if it becomes something that's a more common technique for my work, if it's always going to be become a motion comic. Subject K184, Bear Miranda L. Prepare to be neutralized. Help them, you idiot. Kill the girls. This is our job. This is what we do. Negative. Not anymore. There's nothing I really would have done any differently on this project. I think it came together really well. There's always creative things that we go through, I'm sure. Um, every creative person in, in editing and, and in filmmaking and in, in this medium and in music, we're, we're always critical, you know. Um, but I don't, I try not to regret it or think, oh, I, I, if I could do that differently, you know, because you can't do that because part of the growing process is about those things you see that you're not comfortable with. I mean, growth comes from the breakdown of things and, and the mistakes you make anyway. So even the things that I look at, that I, I'm not completely 100% comfortable with, I know I can look back and use them as a learning tool to get better. You know, if I had known that at the time, you know, nothing's perfect. How do you grow from something that's perfect? You really can't. The only thing you can do is go backwards. So in a way, those mistakes lend themselves to constant growth, and that's really the fun part. It's, it's more the journey than the destination, you know?